Alex Bowman is set to miss at least the next three NASCAR Cup Series events, and Tony Stewart expresses his anger with NASCAR. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. The hits just keep on coming. Today I woke up, spent all morning researching and planning my video from earlier today. Then I went out and had some Raising Cane's chicken fingers for lunch. Extra cane sauce, extra toast, of course. Got my hair cut, as you can see, cut a little shorter than I'd like, but we'll manage, we'll make it work. Then I come home to Alex Bowman announcing he will not be in the car for three more weeks, and Tony Stewart's expressing his frustration with NASCAR to the Associated Press. I mean, stop me if you've heard that one before. The drama, the conflict, it's just never ending. Got a couple stories I'm going to hit on real quick right here, right now. Tomorrow morning, I've already got a couple other stories lined up. Dale Jr. talking about pausing his pursuit of a charter. A leaked memo shows us exactly what NASCAR is changing on the next gen in time for next season. We'll get to that tomorrow. Today, Let's begin with Alex Bowman. Bowman released this statement earlier this afternoon. As much as I hoped to be back in the number 48 Ally Chevrolet this weekend, I will not be returning to competition for the next three NASCAR Cup Series races. I'm continuing to focus my efforts on getting my health back to 100% so that I can return racing as soon as possible. I know that Noah will continue to do a great job representing the number 48, and I'll be cheering him and the entire Ally Racing team on every lap. Thank you again to everyone for the support I've received. It means so much to me. So Bowman confirmed now we'll miss Las Vegas, Homestead, Miami, and Martinsville. I think it's interesting that he's leaving the door open for a potential return at the finale at Phoenix. At this point, and obviously I'm not Alex Bowman, I'm not his doctor, I'm not the team, I'm not anyone important, but I'm surprised he's even leaving that door open. I feel like he should just shut it down for the rest of this season, do whatever he can to try and be in race shape come February, focus all your efforts on the 2023 season. To me, his focus should already be there Interesting that he's leaving the door open to return at Phoenix, potentially. On Hendrick Motorsports' website, they did provide some additional details. Uh, apparently, Bowman was recently evaluated by Dr. Mickey Collins, who, doing a little digging, he's the same doctor who's worked very closely with Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the past. I found that somewhat interesting. Of course, Dale Earnhardt Jr. fans don't need to be reminded, but Dale actually missed a good portion of the 2016 season due to head injuries. Ironically, that's what led to Alex Bowman kind of getting his first big break with Hendrick in the NASCAR Cup Series. So I uh, hope Alex Bowman is continuing to put his health and safety first. That's what it sounds like he's doing. I don't have much else to add. We'll talk about the next gen and safety and some modifications they're making to the car. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. I guess all I can really add in this case is that you know, Alex Bowman's a younger guy. Kurt Busch is in his 40s. It's not as surprising to see a head injury keep him from racing for multiple months, but Alex Bowman's a lot younger. He's still in his late 20s. I guess I was hopeful he would be able to return from that injury before the end of the season. Now that seems extraordinarily unlikely. So um, thoughts are with Alex Bowman. Head injuries are not only a career affecting, but they are life affecting as well, long term. So I hope he's doing his best. It sounds like he's surrounding himself with some of the best to make sure he does get back to 100%, not just to drive race cars, but to live his life for decades to come. So um, it's disappointing news for sure, but there's the latest from Alex Bowman. Now for the latest penalty news. Stuart Haas Racing confirmed earlier this afternoon that they will in fact appear appeal the massive penalty NASCAR handed them for allegedly manipulating the finish of Sunday's Charlotte Roval race. Here is the on-track incident that sparked this whole conflict late in the race on Sunday. Cole Custer brake checked the field going into the backstretch chicane to allow his teammate and playoff driver Chase Briscoe to gain a couple of points over Kyle Larson for the final round of eight spot. Briscoe ended up getting the final round of eight spot, but audio surfaced after the fact that made it appear as though Cole Custer's team deliberately told him to brake check to give Briscoe those positions. Breaking NASCAR's infamous 100% rule, which states that competitors have to go 100% with every intention of getting the best finish possible and grants NASCAR the power to penalize you if they believe you intentionally tried to artificially alter the finish of a race. We got a flat tire. Slow up. I think we got a flat tire. Check up. Check up. So Cole Custer got hit with a $100,000 fine. His crew chief, Mike Shiplett, also got a $100,000 fine and was suspended indefinitely. The team was docked 50 driver and owner points. And today, SHR denied 
any wrongdoing and said they will in fact file an appeal. Here is Stuart Haas Racing's official statement. Stuart Haas Racing denies any wrongdoing and will vigorously defend its personnel against these allegations in its appeal with NASCAR. So SHR will appeal this penalty. Now, simultaneously, like literally in the same afternoon, SHR dropped their appeal of Kevin Harvick's and Rodney Childers's $100,000 fine and 100 point deduction for modifying the rear deck lid. They dropped that penalty. So Rodney Childers will sit out the next three weeks. He already sat out the Charlotte Roval. So he'll be back in time for Phoenix, but that penalty will stand. SHR instead is choosing to file an appeal over this penalty. Meanwhile, gosh, so much is happening all at once. NASCAR amended their own rule book to allow more people from both sides to be present during an appeal. Specifically, they reworded this section to allow more than just one NASCAR official to be present during the appeal. So now NASCAR gets more than one person. I guess SHR now gets more people as well, but <laughs> all this is happening all at once, pretty much. I have no idea if SHR will win this appeal. The appeals panel has been all over the place this season. They almost completely rescinded William Byron's penalty a week ago, and I thought that was a very questionable call, to say the least. This one, I have no idea where they'll go with it. And, you know, I played you the audio from Mike Shiplett, spotter to Cole Custer. We got a flat tire. Slow up. I think we got a flat tire. Check up. Check up. And while it's highly suspicious and pretty obvious what they were doing, they never explicitly say, hey Cole, we need you to pull over so Briscoe can get two more points. Maybe there's a loophole there that SHR can exploit to get much or all of this penalty rescinded. Shoot, anything's possible at this point. It's a reminder that the appeals panel is not NASCAR. NASCAR and the team, in this case, go up to the appeals panel and they try to plead their case and get the appeals panel to side with them. NASCAR is not the appeals panel. So when the appeals panel rescinded the points penalty to William Byron last week, that was not a NASCAR decision. That was the appeals panel, I don't know, not being on the same page. Whatever happens in the case of this SHR deal, the appeals panel, reminder, is not part of NASCAR, technically. NASCAR is going to plead their case the same way SHR is going to plead theirs. Not sure when this appeal will be heard, probably not until next week at the earliest. We'll have to wait and see what comes out of it. Now, Stewart Haas Racing team co-owner Tony Stewart, always known for being outspoken, especially when he was a race car driver, he voiced his frustration to the Associated Press earlier today. When asked about the latest penalty they're faced with, Tony Stewart said, quote, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm so mad at NASCAR right now. I'm not talking about it. If it weren't for the fact that I've got a couple of appearances that I have to make, I wouldn't be in another NASCAR race the rest of the year. Wouldn't waste my time. Ooh, vintage Tony Stewart right there. You know, I was waiting. I've been waiting all this time for Tony Stewart to finally speak his mind. Kevin Harvick, one of his drivers, been tweeting here and there. Rodney Childers been tweeting here and there. I saw he deleted another tweet earlier today. Dude, if you got something to say, just leave it up. Own it. That Stewart Haas Racing statement I read you a moment ago was pretty strongly worded. Now we finally heard straight from the horse's mouth, straight from smoke. And he is furious. You know, I did read that tweet earlier today. This is what Tony Stewart tweeted last night, I believe. Looking for a new weekend hobby something not southeastern based if anyone has any ideas something low drama and relaxing preferably uh, definitely some sarcasm there but you got the humorous tony stewart on twitter and you've got the more just straightforward i'm angry tony stewart there speaking to reporters that, that sounds about right i don't have much else to add but tony stewart has every right to be angry now if he's angry about the kevin harvick penalty you know the one that they just dropped their appeal of I don't think he has a leg to stand on. Harvick and Rodney Childers last week were trying to suggest that, ooh, NASCAR's picking on us unfairly. They dropped their appeal. They broke the rules. I'm led to believe that penalty was fair and just. This latest penalty to Cole Custer I talked about this morning. NASCAR has not applied their 100% rule evenly or consistently the last few years. It's a notoriously vague, ambiguous rule, and NASCAR just does not know how to officiate it properly. So Tony Stewart has every right to be upset. From my vantage point, Cole Custer did break the rules, but so have at least a handful of others in recent years who have not been you know, handed the wrath of God by NASCAR. I cited the Eric Jones, don't pass him Jones incident back in Martinsville 2020. Not sure how that didn't fall under breaking the 100% rule. There's no consistency there. Everything is way too vague, so I don't blame Tony Stewart for being upset. In the past week, his team that he co-owns has been handed $300,000 worth of fines and had two of their cars docked a combined 150 driver owner points. And he's out two crew chiefs for at least the next three weeks. What? He has every right to be upset. This is Tony Stewart. You think he's not going to be hot about this? Uh, voicing his displeasure? I'm not shocked in the slightest, and I don't think he's wrong. He's not wrong to be upset. NASCAR has a lot of trust they have to regain with the teams, the drivers, the fans. 
They've got some work to do, especially when it comes to their officiating department. When they do make what I think is the right call, like in the case of William Byron spinning Hamlin out on purpose, I think they read their own rulebook correctly and issued the correct penalty. The appeals panel overturns it. So uh, there's just miscommunication. There's misinterpretations of the rules going on left and right. Some of it's NASCAR's fault, some of it's not. It's pandemonium. It's all discombobulated. I don't blame Tony Stewart for being upset. He has every right to be. But there you have it. Gosh, every day it's something new. And some, it's many things every single hour. Oh, my head is spinning. Oh, man, I'm not used to the shorter hair. Ugh. Oh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. I have always loved reading your comments, especially the last couple weeks. People are heated, people are passionate, and I don't blame them. Crazy stuff is happening every single day. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as well, and a big thank you as always to my Patreon supporters. We will be back tomorrow morning, I believe. I've got plenty more to talk about, plenty more to discuss. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy, y'all. I'll see you in the next video.